All right, everybody, Harvey Talks Prison here. I want to talk about two different cellies I had that had whole CD. And I might even talk about this other one that was just, you know, he was out there. But the first one I had that had OCD, he, it wasn't bad, bad. But everything had to be in a, it, it, well, a lot of people are like this, and I'm one of them too. Everybody had to have its place and everything, but he was just real particular. He would take his shoes off before he entered the, the cell, put them in a certain spot, you know, after he cleaned them, um, everything had to be just right, you know. And in the wintertime, a lot of times, back then, they would put sand down if there was ice and snow on. It would drive him nuts because we always, we was always tracking sand in. You couldn't help it. And it didn't matter how much you knocked your shoes off or whatever, you'd still get sand in your cell. And he did not like this at all. He said, I'd just rather have it, the snow and ice and deal with that. They eventually switched to this like reddish pink stuff that melted the snow and melted itself. You know, and um, but they used sand for a long time, and it drove everybody nuts. I mean, he wasn't the only one. I didn't like it either. But with him, it, it, he would just get angry. And he'd, he'd lose it, you know. And he'd go say something to him about it and everything. And they wouldn't pay him. You know, they. I think one time they even took him, wrote him up for it because he's getting belligerent with them but uh he uh he uh he just went nuts over this you know and uh but the second one i had had ocd was the worst i don't remember when he first moved in we got along out in the yard i mean we got along great and that's why he moved in. And uh, But he told me ahead of time, he said a lot of people don't like selling with me. And he goes, and that's the problem now. I got to sell it. He doesn't want to sell with me. I need to find somebody. And we got along good, you know, on the yard. We'd talk. We'd work out a little bit sometimes. But they moved him in. And, you know, I, I stepped out while he got everything set up way he wanted it you know and so he did I come back in I sat down I picked up a cigarette lighter lit a cigarette back then we could smoke I set the lighter down on the, the desk he reaches over and moves it just like maybe half an inch and kind of straightens it up and I said what was that all about and he goes, oh, I was just putting it back where you had it. Now, I didn't think nothing about it. This got out of hand quick. I'd take a drink of coffee, set it down, and he'd move it. And I'd, and I'd ask him, well, why are you doing this? And he says, well, I'm just putting it back exactly where you had it. He did the same with his own stuff. If he took a drink of coffee, it was going down in the exact same spot he had. He had a towel over his foot locker, and it left the impression of the cup, so he knew where to put it. And um, I finally told him, I said, dude, I, I, I can't do this no more. And I said, I'm sorry, can't do it. So he moved out, you know. Usually. When you guys decide to move, not be sellies no more, the person who moved in will move out. So he moved out. And I, I always felt bad about that. But he understood, you know. And uh, I remember one time he, t he told me, he says, what's so hard about putting it back exactly where you had it? I said, what's so hard about it? not mattering if it's off a half an inch or, or, or a little bit or the cup's not turned the right way what, what does that matter 
you know. But he was just, I understand he couldn't help it. That's just the way he was, you know. I am going to tell this other story. They brought this guy when I was in Farmington. He was, I think, 23, something like that. But he looked like he's 15. When they first brought him in, you know, people was giving him all kinds of grief. You know, saying, you know, they just messing with him. What we all didn't know was that he was, he was out there. And uh, he would uh, talk in weird voices. He would talk to people who wasn't there. And he would have his lucid moments. And when, during one of these, he showed me his paperwork from Biggs, which is a, a mental hospital in Missouri. And uh, it said he had multiple personalities. It, it is all kinds of stuff, and it was real long. And you know, was, I thought, man, this dude doesn't deserve to be here. He needs to be in a hospital somewhere. And he would bang his head against the wall. I mean, hard, and then rub his head on the wall and stuff. And the first time he, he did that, they thought I did that to him. They almost locked me up. They checked my hands, they, they, they did all this stuff. They talked to him, and it's hard talking to him because you don't know who you're gonna get. But they didn't lock me up, but they took him down there, put him in this padded cell, brought him back three days later, put him right back in my cell, started doing the same thing again. This happened like twice. And then one time I was out in the wing and the CO came by and he says, uh, how's your cell you doing? I said, I don't know, he's sitting in there on his bunk. He goes over and looks and the guy's banging his head against the wall and kind of like almost growling in a growling voice saying things, you know. He jerked him off the bunk, cuffed him, and took him to the hole. Well, they believed me then, you know. And so they was talking to me about him. I said, look, he showed me his paperwork from Biggs. The dude has serious problems. He doesn't need to be here. And uh, they said, well, we can't look at his paperwork unless he gives us permission uh, or, or something, you know. We, we just can't go through his paperwork. So they brought him right back. I went out there and told him, I said, why you keep bringing him back to my cell? I said, I'm about to snap. I'm, I said, they said, well, you're the only one that can, you know, have patience with him. I said, I'm out of patience with him. And I said, I know he can't help it, but I, I'm, I'm about done, you know? That night, the same night after they brought him out, he smoked in bed and he put his cigarettes out in, in the corner of his bunk. And back then we didn't have the foam ones that they got now. We had these cotton ones. It's filled with cotton and the, the pillow was the same way. Well, I wake up to smoke. Now look, and part of his mattress and part of his pillow is just like a big orange glow. It wasn't fire, it's just like a glow. You know, like embers, you know, like a coal. And it's red, you know. I woke him up, got him out of bed. We didn't have the panic buttons then, or a way to get a hold of him, so we had to bang on the door and we got others. They got to helping us and they got to banging on the doors and they came down there and they got us out there. And they wrote him up for arson and destruction of state property. And they was thinking about even the, an attempt on me, you know. But I, I told him, I said, man, he, he, he fe just fell asleep, man. He, he didn't do that on purpose. And they... <laughs> They said, he tried telling them, I wasn't, I didn't do this. They said, 
you did do this. You got cigarette butts in the, the corner of your bunk here. We know you, you set your, your a mattress on fire. They took him away, and I never saw him again. I don't know what happened to him. I hope they put him in a place where he could get help because the guy needed help. He didn't need to be in a prison. A level 4 prison. Just one down from the, the max. With, with these type of mental issues. Anyway. Three stories I told you. I know the last one didn't kind of go with the OCD ones. But I, I wanted to throw that one in there too. And I thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Search but you stay lost We are, we are reaching for the stars But we're